Hello everyone. Today we're gonna to do relative compression testing. We're gonna use the PicoScope and the amp clamp and go through how to set up this process and how to interpret some of the data. So relative compression testing. Uh, this is a way for us to audit just the general mechanical health of an engine relative across all the cylinders. So as the name implies, I'm not gonna be able to know exactly what type of compression I have in terms of a number, but if I have a fault where I think that I've got a cylinder misfire that could be a mechanical fault, Maybe I went and I cranked that car and I can hear a rhythm and I want to know more. This is a way that can help verify that type of fault. And it's really quick to set up. And I think that's where the value and attraction is in this kind of testing. So for us, I'm going to use an amp clamp here. I've got a PicoScope. This is a 600 amp clamp that comes with some of the starter kits. I'm working with a four channel Pico, although any scope and any amp clamp will do. Um, we'll put a secondary test just to show some different equipment. Say I didn't have a Pico or I don't want to spend that much money. Um, there's some alternatives that will give us similar information that we'll explore. And so I'm going to use the Pico scope, my amp clamp. I'm going to utilize a spark tester and a secondary ignition lead uh, so that we can get some idea as to where we're at in the firing order sequence. To start, I'm going to take my amp clamp and get it set up. So here I've got my amp clamp. I've got this lead on channel A for the Pico scope. Uh, this particular clamp I've got to turn on. There is a zero adjustment we can mess with on the laptop here in a minute. But this, I really just need to go around an amperage source for the starter motor. And I could really do that any place. If I could go directly on the cable to the starter, that would be great. I'm going to keep it simple. We're just going to go around the negative lead of the battery. So it's going to capture everything going back to the battery, which will work for what we're doing. I'm going to re remove my coil for... Cylinder one, and this is how I'm going to gain a reference point. There's a lot of different ways that we could do this. Uh, we can use a spark tester like I'm going to do. And because this is a cop, I'm going to have to use this little hypertension extension lead. This is a PicoScope um, accessory. And then that'll give me a way to get a plug wire on here, get out to ground my spark tester. And then this is going to give me a place to monitor for secondary ignition. So I'm going to hook that up with... Just my secondary ignition lead like that. That's going to give me a place to get that pickup. There's lots of different ways that I could do this. If I didn't want to go to this extent, because this is kind of a lot of connection for a COP, um, I could use the wand tool that just goes over and inductively looks at coil unplugs. I could also use a smaller amp clamp, and I could leave one of these plugged in, or all of them, and get a waveform for the current going to the ignition coil on the primary side. So lots of options. Um, ultimately, I just need to see on the screen where does cylinder one's event occur so that I can use that information to determine fire order and cylinder placement on my waveform. So one more quick review on our setup. I've got my amp clamp down here. It is set up just on my negative terminal. I've got the direction of it for current flow going back to the battery. I've removed the ignition coil for cylinder number one. I put in this extra lead with a spark tester so that I can get this secondary ignition pickup here. Last thing I'm gonna do is go and disable fuel on this car. Pretty easy, just to unplug the injectors. So we'll go ahead and do that. On my Pico box, I've got channel A with my amp clamp here and the yellow BNC connector. And then this one here is my secondary ignition pickup. So we'll move over to the screen, we'll get things set up, and we'll conduct the test. So here on my PicoScope screen, uh, I got a couple options on how I could set this up. If I go to the automotive menu, they've got some pre-selected things that I could do. And so relative compression for a petrol vehicle. When I preload these, they give me a web page that has all the setup guide. So they tell you where to make connections, how to operate the vehicle. They also give you this example waveform and some notes about how to interpret it. All these things are really useful. It's one of the great attributes of the PicoScope system is all the information they surround the actual test with. If I go back to the PicoScope software, here's that same example waveform. They've done some pre-setup in terms of selecting an amp clamp, the 600 amp unit. So it's scaled for me already. They've given me a time scale that's long enough that I can see kind of a normal cranking sequence occur. And then they've also given me this yellow diamond, which is my trigger. And so that is a repeating trigger um, on the rising edge. 
for channel A at 200 amps. And so what that means is that once I surpass 200 amps, it will hold that waveform to the right here until I see a drop. Once I hit go and I go crank the car, I don't have to page back through a lot of frames up here at the top um, until I see my waveform. So it's just a nice way to create consistency. I can see that initial spike and then I'll be able to see all the sequencing after that. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the green triangle down here. That'll start capturing and we'll crank the car. Okay, so we crank the car and here I can go up, go back a frame, I'll go back to the first frame. So here we show an initial amperage spike went beyond the 600 according to what this shows. And then I see a stabilization of all my current flows across here. So in this first capture, all we did was look at channel A. And so we spent some time setting up that secondary. And so that's where we'll head next. But first let's think about what's going on here. This is my initial current spike that it took to get the engine rotating. With an electric motor, it's gonna take a significantly larger amount of current to get that moving initially. Similar thought to that, the engine itself, all the inertia, all the mass of the crankshaft, the pistons, the friction that it takes to get all these things to start moving is quite high. So we see a big spike, we see it come down, it does stabilize. And I've got a four cylinder, and so I would expect that I see four peaks on repeat over and over. So the thing here with a healthy engine, this is what I hope to see. I wanna see just a consistent lineup of these peaks. And if I take my measuring block up top here, draw it across, it's about 175 amps and it's very repeatable, right? I can go to my next page here, they're all the same. And that's really all we're after with relative compression is a quick audit. Do we think the mechanical health of this engine is at least similar across all four cylinders. So that's your basic relative compression test. Um, this engine, healthy engine, we see similar peaks, everything looks good. One of the things that I like to do with my students when we're first learning about this test is to do an experiment. So we're gonna walk through that now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a spark plug out of one of the cylinders. We'll set up our B channel so that we've got a trigger and kind of a reference for where we're at in firing order. And then we'll be able to see what does a down or low compression cylinder event look like in the sequence. And then how do I figure out which one that is? So we will go ahead and we'll take out the ignition coil number three and we'll take the spark plug out of cylinder three. And so what this experiment should do is lower my compression on three so that I can see a difference in my waveform to help us understand how that process would work. The extra thing that we need to set up on this is my B channel. And I'm gonna to go to just a B channel probe. I've got a secondary ignition probe hooked up to that. I'm gonna turn that on and we'll go to the 10 kilovolt range. Go to start. And then that'll give me a setup to list both on the same screen. So here we've got our waveform, the same peak where it starts. And then I get into the repetition of individual cylinders, and then we're added with the red trace that shows my ignition event for cylinder number one. So if we zoom these in a little bit, this spike here represents ignition on cylinder one, so does this one over here. And so I'd expect to see four peaks between those. Here I've got one peak, it's a great big dip where no th nothing happens, and then I've got another one, another one, and I start over. And so knowing that we took cylinder three out, I can assume that this is my cylinder three peak that I'm missing. And so we'd have to look up the firing order to determine what the sequence should be. Here's our pro demand lookup for our Outlander. Four cylinder on a Mitsubishi, one, three, four, two is my firing order. So we go back here and think about that. Here's cylinder one, cylinder three, which we knew, four, two. And so going through this process and taking a spark plug out, really quick way to get rid of compression compression in a cylinder and see what that looks like here so that hopefully if I use this tool for a real life fault and customer concern I've got some background about here's what normal should be here's what it looks like now what's the difference and so there's a great power in experimenting with these things I think it makes a lot of sense and is somewhat 
um, normal for us to do this in education, but even the real shop environment, if you want to get good and comfortable with using a PicoScope for some of these diagnostic strategies, taking some of your downtime to do experiments is probably the quickest way to get to that point. So here, just for fun, I've got one of our older OTC handheld scopes. Um, I just looked on eBay. These things are four to $500 used still. So not the most inexpensive piece, but I plugged in the two A and B channels that we had from the PicoScope. Done my best to scale it, having a hard time getting the um, ignition trigger to show well, but we'll just see what this looks like on a different type of scope. So we still get the output that the amp clamp is producing. We can see consistent peaks. I've still got cylinder threes spark plug out. And I think I need to look at a smaller sample of time. You can see this dip that repeats. I've got three peaks and then a missing peak. So I'm getting the same data and same information. And I think with enough work, we could get the secondary ignition trigger happy to where it showed on this. Um, a future video that I'll make, I'm very interested in checking out some of the cheaper scopes like the Handtech that are on Amazon. And so someday I'll get to that point and I'll compare the two and do some of these tests and see how they compare between the Pico and a cheaper, you know, $70 Handtech scope. That's our relative compression test. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope it was useful for you and you, that you learned some things. Uh, I'm going to start making more and more PicoScope videos about just general setups and use, and then hopefully later some comparative things of the PicoScope and some of the other scopes that are on the market. Thanks for watching.